Hey guys, I, um, I want to share a story about something that happened a while back. This is uh, early 90s, um, after my parents came home uh, from, a, from a trip abroad. So, but first I have to share some background about my family and, you know, kind of uh, how we ended up here in the U.S. Mm -hmm. so, both sides of my family, we have roots that go back to the Caucasus Mountains. So this area between the Black and the Caspian Sea, currently part of um, Russia, the very southern border of Russia. But it wasn't always part of Russia. There was like a hundred year war that, you know, we were engaged in with the Russians that ended with us losing, and then there was this mass exodus out of, um, out of our homeland um, into Eastern Europe, into the Middle East. This happened in about the mid-1800s, 1864, somewhere around there. My father grew up in present-day Syria, right, uh, in the Golan Heights. It's a little area that was eventually taken over by Israel. Um, and displacing our family again. Well, so my father grew up longing for the homeland, um, longing to go back. Um, even his teacher would sing songs and tell stories of what life was like back there. Even growing up, I heard my father fantasizing about oh, one day returning back home, going back to the homeland. Thing. And so when the Soviet Union finally fell, what, in like late 1800s, late, late, late 1980s, um, and you know those borders opened there was talk in our community people wanting to go back wanting to see the homeland wanting to finally you know be there this is a place they've never been for generations so this is a really incredible opportunity you know they had the means to go to travel there and now finally the political situation had changed so this is like a time of a lot of excitement um among the circassian community wanting to, to to return home eventually my father had an opportunity in the early 1990s um he went with you know other relatives and they visited the homeland anyway he comes home and you know shares all these stories you know how he met people from the family that, um, like, but something he said really caught my attention he was talking to these people you know using his native language um and and somebody commented that the way he spoke was very old, very old-fashioned. Um, um, because, again, our family left in the mid-1800s, and the language had changed in the, what, 130, 40, 50 years since you know, we'd been there. Um, uh, but when you leave the homeland, there's always this desire to preserve the culture, right? Keep the language. And so something that is very dynamic, something that's always changing, now became something very static. And whereas my father and all those, you know, the, the generations that came before him were just preserving, 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 um, there was this fear of losing it. So there's always this fear of changing it. But then when you go back home, well, those people didn't have that fear. They were just living their lives, their, their circassians, this is the homeland, and they didn't have that same fear of, the, of allowing the culture to evolve, allowing the language to evolve. He came home and he's like, man, I grew up in the Middle East, I was born and raised there, but never really felt of, that he was a part of that, that he was, you know, um, that was his home. Came to America, got married, had a family, but never really felt that he belonged here either. And now here he is going to the homeland, something he dreamed of his entire life. Um, and there's somebody there saying, you don't quite belong here either. And that's a hard thing. That's a hard thing. And I think people who grow up in between cultures feel this. They really feel that they don't belong anywhere. They don't belong in the place they were born. They don't belong in the place where their ancestors came from. And so there's this kind of permanent state of, you know, just kind of existing, just floating there, not really having a home. So I, I did take something from this uh, that I think is relevant to our culture today here in America. So the first lesson is we all want to belong, that we, we, we do want a place we, we, we can call home, a place where we feel welcome, a place that, that, that is welcoming to us. 
So this is a really important thing, I think, for all human beings, just belonging and having that sense of connection in the society where you live. The second lesson I took from this uh, was that we sometimes have this nostalgic, romantic view and understanding of our culture, our language, um, believing that it's something that's static, that doesn't change. Cultures, languages are constantly evolving, constantly changing. And sometimes they change faster, right? And I think we're, we're at a point in our culture here in America where it's changing very rapidly and we're seeing this kind of backlash that like this is not the land I grew up in, this is not the culture I grew up in, things have changed. And it's painful. It, you feel like you don't belong in the place where, where this is the only place you feel connected to. So this is um, you know, something we, we need to be aware of and you know, cognizant of in, in how we interact with one another. Um, when cultures do change, there's this sense of alienation. I think the third thing is we need to have more empathy for people who do exist between cultures. We sometimes, in both cultures that this person belongs to, there's this sense of other, otherness, right? Uh, this othering that both societies kind of impose on them or view them the way that they view them. So you are not one of us because you don't have loyalties to just us. You exist in our society, but somebody else's. So you can't be trusted. This idea of divided loyalties. So rather than look at these people as not fully belonging to us, I think a, a healthier way to view it is hey, you know, you belong to us, you also belong to another group, but you belong to us. And what I found is these people that exist between societies have some of the best insights, some of the best stories, some of the best um, perspectives and, and, and for, for both cultures and, and very objective. And they can a lot, a lot of often see the, the, the faults and the flaws that each group can't see within themselves that each, the other group sees in the others, but they don't see within themselves. Um, and there's real opportunity for growth and an in, in understanding within these people. So I, I definitely highly recommend learning from them and, and accepting them and welcoming them. That's it, those are the lessons, the things that I've learned. I hope you found it helpful. These are the things that I've learned over the years and insights I've had, you know, you know, going through experiences like this, hearing the stories of people who kind of exist between societies and my own experience of existing between societies, cultures, and so on. So hope that helps. Um, please share your stories as well. I'd love to learn. Thank you. All right. Have a great day.